I said I was closing that door, but we're going to open it again. Let's talk about the Real Housewives of Orange County, The Reunion. Oh. I said I wasn't going to do it, but back by popular demand, we're going to break down The Real Housewives of Orange County, Season 15, Reunion. If you are not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click the button to subscribe. It's right below. And that way, you never miss out on anything because this is where the party's at. What the hell are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It helps my channel grow so, 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 so much. So you're doing me a real big solid. Let's get into it. Time to review the Real Housewives of Orange County reunion. So we start the reunion with throwing some slight shade towards Gina. Andy Cohen looks at her and says, Gina, wow, it looks like you finally figured out your hair, which she did. Gina, if you're watching, Gina, if you're watching, don't fuck with your hair again. You've got a good thing going. Let it be, henty. Um, and also Bronwyn said that her look is lesbian chic. I can't with this bitch. Also, it's Elizabeth's first reunion, so she better buckle up, henny. Shit's gonna get wild. Elizabeth, I hope you're ready for it because reunion time is cry. All right, so it's time to break down the first set of issues, and they're between Bronwyn and Gina. We talk about the awkward text message that Gina received from Sean. We talk about the tiny house. We talk about the, you're a sloppy chihuahua. You're wasted all the time. Yeah, we break all that down. So let's start with the text message. So... I can see how Gina thought it might have been weird. However, according to Shannon and everybody else, Gina was very wasted when she received that text message. So it could have easily gotten lost in translation. However, mm, I can see where Gina's coming from. I thought it was weird personally. What do y'all think? Comment below. I thought the text message was flippin' weird. The tiny house. So Bronwyn is saying that she heard about the sad and depressing tiny house from Shannon, which then caused Shannon to tizzy into a spiral and get all upset. And then this moment was brought up when Shannon went and looked at Gina's house. Faking a smile the whole time. You kept saying nice over and over again. This is our living room. Yes, really That's nice. The kitchen. This is nice. So what do y'all think? Do you think Shannon was being genuine or was she being fake as fuck? Nice, 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 nice. Personally, I think Shannon was being a bitch and she was being fake and she didn't even know what else to say about her house. And there, I said it. But let's all not forget that Gina owns her home while the rest of ladies sitting in those chairs rent their big McMansions. So mad respect for Gina for owning a home, her cute little, you know, house that's reasonably sized. I don't think it's tiny. It's a normal sized house. So everybody else can just go fuck off, seriously. Also then all the ladies brought up that Bronwyn went around and trashed Gina off camera and told everybody that Gina shouldn't even be on the show. Like, what the hell is wrong with this woman? But Shannon, she is pissed. She is pissed because Bronwyn is putting words in Shannon's mouth about saying the house is sad and depressing. So do we believe it? Do we not believe it? <sighs> I can see both sides. I don't trust Shannon, and now I'm seeing a new side of Bronwyn that I don't really like. So I'm just gonna leave it up to you guys. What do you think? Comment below. But Gina, she is such the bigger person in this situation. So she still thinks Bronwyn is an asshole, but told Bronwyn that she'll always be there for her no matter what. And Gina knows that the friendship is 100% a one-way friendship only about Bronwyn. So now we start talking about John and Shannon and that relationship and how alcohol affects 
how she spills info to the ladies, aka Gina. So apparently she called Gina over and over and over and over again, completely bombed, trashing and bitching John and saying how awful things are in her relationship and she doesn't think they're gonna make it and just really made it sound like a mayday, mayday, get out, get out, get out situation. And it's just all the ladies are concerned, which I feel like they have every right to be concerned when you spill information like that and make it seem like you're in some horrible, abusive relationship. So yeah, of course all the ladies are concerned for Shannon and concerned about her drinking, and we'll get to that in a freaking second. But this is what Shannon's doing, deflecting and making excuses and saying, I never said that. No, that's not the case. That's not the case. Bitch, get your facts straight. Seriously. In true Shannon fashion, she's sitting her fucking hippie ass in that chair, painting a little rosy picture about her and John, and saying, they're fine, they're great, never have been better. Come on, y'all. Shannon, get your life. So then Andy turns to Bronwyn and asks her if she thinks Shannon has a problem with alcohol. Bronwyn, if you think Shannon has a problem with alcohol. Yeah. 100% Shannon has an alcohol problem. I'm not saying that she's an alcoholic or what Shannon replied with. I'm fine. I'm not an alcoholic. I think there's a big difference. I don't think Shannon needs to have booze to make it through a day, which alcoholic, but I do think that she abuses alcohol and doesn't handle it very well. So I think she has a problem with alcohol and I think Shannon needs to fucking realize that. When you drink so much and you spill information to people that is true or not true and then regret it or forget about it later, yeah, you have a problem with alcohol. So own it, bitch. Own it. Oh. But Shannon had a phone call with John in her dressing room and John nailed it about Bronwyn. 100% straight facts. I'm sorry, but Bronwyn is a sober alcoholic and wants to point fingers at everyone else that they're alcoholics to make themselves feel better. And I couldn't have said it better myself. Bronwyn, now that she is sober, is going around and pointing fingers and saying, you have a problem with alcohol, you have a problem with alcohol, you have a problem with alcohol. It's very Luann syndrome. That's what Luann did. Bronwyn, get the fuck off of your high horse or you're gonna get knocked off of it some other way. So climb off or get kicked off. Just saying, just saying. So now we're gonna talk about COVID, y'all. <sighs> so as we all know, Emily and her family got COVID. Shannon and her family got COVID. And we saw all of that unfold throughout the season. And this is one of the only times we're gonna do a little deep dive into Miss Kelly fucking Dodd. Fucking KD coughing. Of my parents. <coughs> Awkward. So now we grill KD on her stance on masks. And yes, I still think that Kelly is a fucking asshole. She's an asshole. Tell, tell us now, what is your stance on masks? Well, I hate wearing masks. And right? like, I, think everybody, I think everybody's on that with me. No filter, but not in a good way. I want her gone. I really don't like her. I don't like her. Of course, Kelly hates wearing masks. That is not a shocker. And she literally is a moron. Masks help. Masks work. Wear your mask for the love of God and do not listen to Kelly. She has no idea what she's talking about and she's spreading misinformation. She thinks and said, well, you know, do underwear protect you from a fart? But does your pants protect you from a fart? Like, is it helping? Are the masks helping? I don't know. What the hell are you talking about, you dumb psycho? I can't. So then Andy goes in on her social media backlash that she got regarding her stance on COVID. All the trips that she took, 
her behavior on the show, off the show, on social media. I literally cannot. My fan base is building. I haven't lost any followers. I mean... Like, here's the deal. Like, apparently, which I'm not shocked and we all knew this, Andy got so much crap on social media because of the things that Kelly said. And Andy said, I've never had this happen before with any of the housewives. People wanted to boycott the show. They don't want you on the show anymore. He's like, I've never had that type of reaction from a housewife. And then here we go again, a Kelly freaking apology tour. Like she did it on Watch What Happens Live and now she's doing it again. What else can you say? Like you are a complete ass hole. And then Kelly called Andy Cohen anti-American because we all know he don't like Trump and I don't like Trump. And if you don't like politicalness here, bye. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Okay. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. All right. So Kelly also said that COVID is God's way of thinning the herd. Oh God, uh, Kelly. So then Andy brings up that Kelly's mom was in the ICU because of COVID and then Kelly responds with, no, it wasn't because of COVID. It's because her blood sugar was out of whack. D what is happening here? What is happening with this woman? Like she is literally making no sense at all and I cannot handle it. I can't handle it. The things that come out of her mouth make zero sense. She is an idiot an idiot and if she doesn't get fired <sighs> i don't know what i'm gonna do she's out here being a complete fucking asshole on social media belittling mask wearing belittling covid making light out of it traveling doing x y and z and not taking anything seriously and she's a little bit of a racist and we'll get into that next week in part two of yeah we get in political yo Next week, it's gonna get crazy. So if this is not what you like to talk about, goodbye. Moving on from Kelly because I cannot talk about it any longer. She pisses me off. Elizabeth still confuses me. So Bronwyn mentioned something about Elizabeth. This is shady, yo, and shitty. Shitty and shady. Bronwyn brings up that she has a friend who is friends with Elizabeth's ex-husband and his new fiance, which totally threw Elizabeth because she had no idea that he had a new fiance. And don't you think someone who is close with their ex and dealing with a contentious divorce would know if their ex-husband has a new fiance if they talk daily? Like, Bronwyn, what are you doing? What are you doing? Look at your life. Look at your choices. Apparently, the ex-husband and the fiancé have been together for five years. Here we go. Bronwyn digging around. This is what Bronwyn does best. She said that she was on the phone with the ex-husband and the fiancé. Girl code, bitch. Learn it. That is messy. That is rude. It's cruel especially since Bronwyn knew about the divorce and how messy and contentious it was. And Bronwyn still had the conversation. She should have said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I'm friends with Elizabeth or attempting to be friends with Elizabeth. This ain't right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bronwyn does not support other women. There, I said it. I think Bronwyn is fucking bored because she's not drinking anymore. She has no idea what she's talking about. She talks out of both sides of her fucking mouth. She is a snake and a liar, and I do not like her. And there, I said it. I have a lot to say about fucking Bronwyn. She let me down in the absolute worst way possible, and I will never forgive her for that. She's done, hunty. Elizabeth is right. Bronwyn is a backstabbing bitch. Don't Mike. judge me with your cynical behavior. I'm not judging you. And your narcissism and your backlashes and your two-faced personality. <laughs> you. She dug into Elizabeth's finances earlier in the season and Bronwyn is still nailing home that Shannon planted that seed. I'm beginning to see who the real villain of this season is. 
and it's Bronwyn. I will say this, I love when Andy Cohen screams. All right, okay, all right, all right. Okay, all right, I'm moving on. I'm just gonna leave you guys with this about Elizabeth. Do I like Elizabeth? Yes. Do I think she's confusing and things don't add up? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Is she a shit person? No. Do I kind of understand where she's coming from? Yes, I do. She finds it extremely hard to let people in and get close to people, so she puts up these guards and this facade of a perfect life because she doesn't want to let people know who the real her is. So I can see where she's coming from. She didn't lie. She might have bended the truth a little bit. So now let's talk about Bronwyn's sobriety. She's a real bitch. First of all, I don't have to explain alcoholism. If you want, you can Google it. She is so defensive about everything. She had a scene where she told, was it Gina or Shannon, one of the two, that she had kids so she wouldn't need to deal with how she felt about not drinking. Who? does and says that. She then goes on to say that she's an addict, which, no fucking shit. She's addicted to fame now. Fame! She's fame hungry and that's all she cares about, stepping all over everybody and doing whatever she can to be the queen bee of fucking OC. Well, guess what? You are not the queen bee of OC and you're never gonna be the queen bee of OC. That title goes to Tamra. There, I said it. And this is probably the only time you're ever gonna hear me say this. Kelly Dodd, I agree with you. I agree with you. She says what we all think. So wait, you and think I'm a it. fake alcoholic? Yes, I do. F you. Oh. This is the only time I'm ever gonna say that. So, Bronwyn is a narcissist. Or as Bronwyn says, I have a big ego. Bitch, they're the same. But then I see how genuine Emily and Gina are about Bronwyn because they both went to her to an AA meeting. So I'm just, I'm really having a hard time wrapping my mind around this whole sobriety thing with Bronwyn. I don't know if it's real or if it's fake because someone that is trying to be sober doesn't go around and behave the way that she's behaving. She is an asshole. Be a little more respectful. Be a little more humble. I'm really let down with Bronwyn this season. I really am. All right, but now we have to... We end the reunion with the bombshell of all bombshells. And this is gonna forever change the way that I think a lot of us view Bronwyn. When my daughter Stella was 14 years old at a very first beach barbecue, you went up to her and said, Stella, if you want the good stuff, text me. My God, the good stuff. Bronwyn, you're a real bitch. So next week, y'all, part two of the Real Housewives of Orange County reunion, it concludes. We're going to talk about Elizabeth and she's bisexual. We're gonna talk about Bronwyn and her never being attracted to men in front of her husband, she says that. And then we also see the fallout and the repercussions of Bronwyn telling Shannon's 14 year old daughter, if you want the good stuff, let me know. Y'all, maybe Emily was right. Maybe this was a pretty good reunion and there I said it there I said it So I'll be back next week for the Real Housewives of Orange County part two Reunion get yourself subscribed so you know when that video gets posted so you don't miss it Give this video a big thumbs up and that's all guys. We'll talk Real Housewives of Orange County next week Get yourself subscribed. We'll talk later. Bye